Pearson. We just uh, wanted to share some videos and highlights and some pictures of our trip. We didn't have any time while we were there to make any videos just because we just were so busy with the work and and just kind of meeting people and seeing what the needs were and just praying for people and and loving on people and uh, I shared my testimony five times there in the short time we were, we were there so you know there was a lot of a lot of being tired a lot of, a lot of days and uh, so we're just we got time now we're traveling on the road so we'll kind of do that now that part of it and um, yeah we just hope you enjoy all right we made it here to Fort McPherson it's about uh, what time is it 11 o'clock almost and the sun's still up so it's pretty cool and uh, we're just gonna get some bed and get going tomorrow and uh, yeah, we're excited to be here and I think Conrad wanted to do something here before we get going tomorrow. My kids told me when you get to you fix the crow. <laughs> That's a crazy trip. Wow. The Gwich'in people. I just wanted to just just share a little bit before we kind of get into some of the other details about our trip. Just the, the Gwich'in people they're called and and I wasn't really sure what to expect but uh, one thing that happened is these people they really get into your heart like you could just they just accept you and they just love you and they just they just they're just so giving of their time and their food and their their energy and and uh and they're just so loving and accepting of who you are regardless of who you are and and that that was really cool to see i wasn't expecting that and um and and they're just proud to be called gwitchin they anyone we talked to they'd be like yeah we're gwitchin you know we're gwitchin and there was a sense of pride in who they were and and the people they were and they they're people of the land still and uh and uh, yeah and one of the things that that also stood out to me about them is just how how willing they were just to give you their ear to listen what you had to say and and i was really blessed by that just how they just would listen and and hear and uh and i just i just bless them you know i just i just think you know that there's lessons to be learned from these people and and i just speak blessing over them so with that We'll keep going. So here we are on the next morning after the day we arrived and we just crashed really hard when we got to the church. And uh, yeah, there's a picture of Arrow and Maggie sleeping hard. And, and yeah, the building was very nice, very beautiful facility really clean and it accommodated our needs pretty well and we had breakfast lunch and dinner in there and uh, the kids played in there and uh, yeah we spent a lot of time in there and uh, yeah I think it was just really really more than what we expected actually so here's the church in Fort McPherson kitchen and bathrooms over there and storage and we slept here and we ate there we're trying to keep cool because it is very hot up here right now So we hit the ground running pretty hard on the first day with the work and uh, I just wanted to show you kind of a street view. There's where we were staying and then across the road there, there's a municipality office and you got to have some trailers in between and then that building there with the white van is the band office. And then there's the missionary's house and then the neighbor in between is, his name is Les. 
and I'll tell you more about them later but uh, one thing I was noticing that a lot of the houses have plywood covering the windows and that's not because they're abandoned it's because they're trying to keep the sunlight out and it seemed like there was all these uh, kind of half work shop places that were just kind of scattered throughout the town there and uh, yeah, it was obvious to me when we got there that the roof was in very desperate need to be to be redone. I'm surprised it hadn't leaked. And uh, Les, the neighbor, he came over kind of looking for a job. So we just gave him a job. I gave him a drill and he knew what to do. And I just said, have at it, brother. And he just went to town working and working away and didn't complain. And, and uh, yeah, the Dempster had really really took a toll on the trailer it just was full of dust by the time we got everything opened up and uh yeah but we hit her hard right away we just started strapping and started throwing tin on they were up here in the northwest territories putting the roof on and we got the main man here paul hanthorn hello how do you feel about the new roof going on oh it's going on smoothly it's beautiful Beautiful, it's going to be great. Masicho. Masicho, that means thank you. All right, see you later. Less snowshoe. So much could be said about this man in such a short time that we were there, just a few days. He, uh, one of the things that stood out to me, he was very christ-like in in the way he treated us and uh he, he came and helped us and we needed some boards and he gave us that and we needed a longer ladder and he gave us that and he he was just very generous with everything he had and uh i'm sure if we needed more stuff he would just give it to us and and uh yeah it was just fun hanging out with him he didn't really show too much emotion while we were working and uh and I think when we were working, he was kind of just watching us and, and seeing what we were like. And um, and we never kind of preached at him. We never told him, hey, you got to come and listen to me speak. I don't even think he heard us, heard me speak once. But, uh, and uh, yeah, he just had all these awesome stories, how he built the town. And he'd tell me stories, how he worked on this building and he worked on that building. and. And he did this over here and did that over there and he was really intrigued by the tools I had so it was kind of fun just talking about the different tools in my toolbox and he was just a cool guy just a cool guy just hanging out and this is his house here where he keeps his nephew and one of his uh, his uh, grandchildren and um, he lives right beside the missionaries there and and yeah, he was just always available, always willing to do whatever. And uh, yeah, and then just before we were leaving, he came looking for me there and he talked to Lovejoy, said he really had to talk to me and he wanted to say something to me. And and just on our way out there, he was on the ferry and he, he uh, roll, I rolled down the window and he just grabbed my hand and he just squeezed it so tight. And he's like, thank you for everything you did for our community thank you for what you did for me and and I love you and uh, and I just said to him man you're like an uncle to me I know you're not not like my real uncle but if I lived in this community you would be my uncle man and and I said I love you man and we'll see you soon and and yeah it was really cool Leslie, he was 
was just it was just the neighbors here. He was in front of his house there, and uh, we started talking, and we had a really good connection right away. Like it was very friendly. Like you know, he, you could tell he had, he has a rough life, but we had a very good. Connection. We clicked right away, and uh, then Dwayne came, and uh, because he was late for work a little bit, so he came too, and we got along really good. Like, like just like we would be here long friends. We talk, and Leslie told us a story. to share the story how he got stuck with a snowmobile many years ago and it was the springtime he fell through the ice with a snowmobile and miraculously he got out and he saw a bright light leading him out to the highway that saved his life and he heard God saying I'm not finished with you yet, Leslie. But that's the story that he told us. That was that was pretty cool. Anywho, like the moral of the story would be that don't judge a book by its cover. And uh, the Bible says, "My people hear my voice." God knows his sheep. Kind of, yeah, it's something I cannot describe, but Les is just a dear friend. I hardly don't know him. He's a rough character. His family life is rough. His no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to finish the show, uh, story about Leslie Snowshoe. Leslie Snowshoe is his name. And uh, he had a very rough life. Like he has a rough family life. He just told us about the suicide of his nephew. Lots of alcohol problems. Or... But... Uh, one evening he brought us over a piece of caribou meat like so that was pretty cool and we invited him the next day Claudia cooked it in, in a stew and we, we asked him so what should we do with it and we invited him for supper well, that was that was really nice so anyway we we found a good friend the last day he wasn't there when we left so we went down to the ferry and who was working on the ferry our friend Leslie and so we said big goodbyes big hugs and some tears and one day one way or the other I will see him again yeah so we just like to kind of just share a little bit about uh, on day number there just kind of and maybe the, the things leading up to it just some of the ministry time and, and uh, sharing God's love with people and I just just want to just say first that you know some of the the stories that we share you know they're really sensitive topics and uh, you know and I just I just want to honor the people that that allowed us to share their story and their stories and allowed us to pray for them and allowed us to speak into their lives like you know and um and it's not about us it's not about anything we've done we we just felt the lord's leading and the lord's speaking and we just sort of followed and uh so yeah like like the construction we kind of just hit the ground running we just uh i took the booklets to the to the job site there and and there was
was people walking by and we just kind of we just went out onto the road and shook people's hands and gave them booklets and uh, and Paul the, the missionary there he was he was introducing us to people and we, we met the principal and we met uh, one of the counselors and uh, yeah we just we just met people we shook people's hands we just told them where we were from and we gave them booklets and uh, some of the people they let us pray for them and um, and yeah it was really cool and uh, and the people were really open and my, and my thinking was like I I want to get as many booklets into as many people's hands because we'll be we'll be sharing our story on uh, Sunday so if we can kind of get the word out there you know it was it was uh, Friday when we got going on the work and, and uh, kind of the ministry time, the street ministry time, and and yeah, and I think some somewhere in the afternoon there, uh, Paul Paul came up to me and was like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a service tonight," and uh, <laughs> and then he said, "We're gonna have a service tomorrow on Saturday, and then you'll share again on Sunday." And my first reaction was like, uh, I don't really like that idea just because it's it's hard for me to share my story and and even once and it usually takes takes a while to recover emotionally. And then in that moment I just kinda felt like, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna come under kind of Paul's leadership and I'm just gonna respect him as kind of the the kind of the person God has put in the community and I was like all right man whatever whatever you need whatever you want yeah we'll, we'll do it you know I'll share my story tonight